We have just finished an extraordinary uh, summit uh, of NATO leaders to address uh, the biggest threat to our security in a generation, President Putin's war against uh, Ukraine. The people of Ukraine are resisting with uh, courage and determination, fighting for their freedom and for their future. We stand with them. President Zelensky addressed us with an impassioned message, thanking NATO allies for the significant support we are providing and stressing the vital importance of even more military assistance. Today, NATO leaders agreed that we must uh, and will provide further support to Ukraine. We will continue to impose unprecedented costs on Russia and we will reinforce allied deterrence and defense. Leaders approved uh, our four new battle groups in Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania and Slovakia. These are in addition to the four already in the Baltic countries and Poland. So we have eight uh, multinational uh, NATO battle groups uh, now, from the uh, Baltic Sea to the Black Sea. Across uh, Europe, there are uh, 100,000 US troops uh, 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 supporting NATO efforts, and European allies and Canada have also stepped up. We have 40,000 forces under direct NATO command, mostly in the eastern part of the alliance, backed by major air and naval power, including an unprecedented five carrier strike groups from the high north to the Mediterranean. Today, NATO leaders uh, agreed to reset our deterrence and defense for the longer term, to face a new security reality. On land, we will have substantially more forces in the eastern part of the alliance at higher readiness, with more pre-positioned equipment and supplies. In the air, we will deploy more jets and strengthen our integrated air and missile defense. At sea, we will have um, carrier strike groups, submarines, and significant numbers of combat ships on a persistent basis. We will also strengthen our cyber defenses and enhance our exercises, focusing on collective defense and interoperability. I expect we will decide on the details at our next summit in Madrid in June. Today, Allied leaders also agreed to provide further support to Ukraine helping to uphold their fundamental right to self-defense. Allies are also equipping uh, Ukraine with significant military supplies, including anti-tank and air defense systems and drones, which are proving highly effective, as well as substantial financial and humanitarian aid. Today, we agreed to do more, including cyber security assistance and equipment to help Ukraine protect against biological, chemical, radiological, and nuclear threats. This could include detection, protection, and medical uh, supplies, as well as uh, training for decontamination and crisis management. We are determined to do uh, all we can to support Ukraine and I welcome the concrete offers uh, of assistance made by allies today. At the same time, we have a responsibility to ensure the conflict does not escalate further, because this would be even more dangerous and more devastating. Allies agreed that we must also increase our support for other partners at risk from uh, Russia, um, and in, uh, from, uh, at risk from Russian threats and interference, including Georgia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Working together and with uh, the European Union, we must help them uphold their sovereignty and strengthen their resilience. We also addressed uh, Beijing's role in the crisis 
Today, uh, Allied leaders called on China to refrain from supporting uh, Russia's war effort. China must not provide economic or military support for the Russian invasion. Instead, Beijing should use its significant influence on Russia and promote uh, an uh, immediate peaceful resolution. Allies also agree that Belarus must stop acting as an accomplice to Putin's invasion. At today's meeting, leaders reaffirmed strong, uh, our strong commitment to NATO's open door policy under Article 10 of the Washington Treaty. NATO enlargement has been an historic success, spreading democracy, freedom and prosperity across Europe. One month uh, since the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, NATO's security environment has fundamentally changed for the long haul. And we are responding. But security, but security does not come for free, and doing more will cost more. So NATO leaders agreed to redouble efforts to meet the defense investment pledge we made in 2014. Allies will submit additional plans on how to meet the pledge in time for the Madrid summit in June. And I welcome that a number of allies today announced plans for significant increases in defense spending. At this dangerous time, transatlantic unity and solidarity are vital. Europe and North America are standing and will continue to stand strong together in NATO.